Ugh, food. So if you've been watching my fragrance videos, I'm sure that you know by now that oud is my favorite fragrance note. I love many fragrance notes. I really do enjoy many of them, but oud, oh, there is something about oud that just like, oh my goodness, just makes me feel a certain kind of way. I love its intensity, its richness, everything about oud when it's done right. Now, today's video, is all about one of the latest releases from Kayali, the Oud Gasm Collection. This collection was released about two months ago and I picked it up immediately. I ordered it from the Huda Beauty site the day that it was launched. So today I'm going to be sharing with you the four fragrances that are part of the collection. I picked up all four. I will be giving you an in-depth review I'll be talking about performance, some of the notes, how they each make me feel, and my very honest opinion on each fragrance. And boy, do I have a lot to say. I also picked up the four back cords that are part of this collection, and I will also be sharing with you the burner, the back core burner that I picked up on Amazon that cost me like $10 and does an incredible job. But before we jump right into it, if this is your first time here, I'm Arahi, and in this channel, we primarily review and talk about niche and designer fragrances. I sprinkle a little bit of makeup on it at times and some fashion just to keep it spicy and going. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, to like, give this video a thumbs up, and please don't forget to pause every so often when you have something to say or you wanna ask me a question or you just wanna start a chat in the comment section. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Before we get started, I did wanna share with you a couple of things. Number one, this is going to be a very honest review. I have purchased all of these items with my own money. They were not gifted. They were not received as part of PR. No part of this video, no part of the content of this video has been sponsored. This is truly my very honest opinion. Let's start by taking a look at this collection. In this collection, we have four fragrances. Oudgasm Cafe Oud 19, Oudgasm Rose Oud 16, Oudgasm Tobacco Oud 04, and Oudgasm Vanilla Oud 36. In this collection, we also have four back whores that are actually matches to the different fragrances in the collection. Okay, so just in case you are new to the fragrance community here on YouTube or in any other platform, Kayali is a fragrance house that was founded in 2018 by Mona Katan. The parent company of Kayali is Huda Beauty, yes, from Huda. The company is based out of United Arab Emirates and most of their fragrances are actually created or developed in France. Mona Katan is truly a fragrance fanatic, and I believe that she is truly committed to the utmost quality of her fragrances. All fragrances are inspired by Mona's rich Middle Eastern heritage, and she really encourages us to use the fragrances in her collection to layer and to experience different moods as you use and combine different fragrances. So before we jump right into talking about each one of the fragrances in detail, let me just tell you a little bit more about the bottle. So these bottles come in 50 ml and there's also a travel size. I think there's a 30 ml. I can't remember if there's a 10 ml also. Each bottle can be distinguished by a different color for the fonts or the letters um, on the bottle. So, so this one, which is the first one that we will be talking about is Cafe Oud 19. And in case you're not familiar with Kayali, 
Every time they launch a fragrance, there's a name obviously to the fragrance, but the name is always followed by a number. That number signifies the number of trials or the number of tests or the number of iterations that they had to go through before landing on the final fragrance. So we're gonna go ahead and start with Oudgasm Cafe Oud 19. I have my notes here. This is, according to Mona, this is one of the least intense of the four, right? And, and I do agree with that. I would say that the Vanilla Oud, which is the next one after this one, and this one, Cafe Oud, are the least intense of the four. But with that being said, these are really not faint fragrances. And, and I know that a lot of people um, have had issues in the past with Kayali fragrances because they say that they don't last, that they're not beast mode. Personally, I don't have performance issues with Kayali fragrances, but you know, I do overspray and I do tend to layer and that definitely helps quite a bit. When I first heard about Cafe Oud, I thought that I was gonna get a fragrance that upon sniffing it uh, was going to be just very coffee dominant. Where is the coffee? So. The coffee is definitely there, guys. When you spray this on your skin, you are going to get coffee. You are going to get what I would like to call a milky type of coffee note. Now, that is not to say that I don't like this fragrance. I actually do like this fragrance. I think it's quite lovely. Now, the notes as shared by Kayali for this fragrance do not speak to coffee per se, even though the name of the fragrance is Cafe Oud. They speak to cappuccino. And I think that that is quite accurate because in spraying and using this fragrance, and I have used it quite a bit, I've, I've used each one of these fragrances at least three times before sitting to film this video, and I've done entire day tests on them, I can tell you that this is not a coffee type of scent for me. This is definitely a milky coffee kind of cappuccino smell. And I do pick that up immediately, right? So for me, this is when it opens, it's this creamy cappuccino, a beautiful cappuccino. We have some mandarin orange. I do pick up on a hint of bergamot. And um, then in the middle, it starts to go into this very light rose. And at the base, I pick up patchouli, but the patchouli is very light. It's not, you know, because patchouli can be quite overpowering. No, this patchouli is light. And then once I pick up that patchouli, I start to pick up on hints of vanilla and a very, very light and well done musk. All of that has, all of that journey for me has oud in the background. But this oud, guys, let me tell you, the star of this fragrance for me is that mix of that very well done, very, very sophisticated. I have to call it a sophisticated oud because there's nothing skanky about it. There's nothing animalic about it. It is done so beautifully, truly beautifully, masterfully done. It, this fragrance for me has the perfect balance and mix of that cappuccino note with that very well done, smooth oud. There is nothing screaming at you in this fragrance. There is nothing screechy about this fragrance. It's a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. And guys, I have worn this all day. I've gone out with it. I have received compliments and I have also slept with this fragrance. It is just a beautifully done fragrance. I really, really think this is very unique, very different. So how does this fragrance make me feel? This fragrance makes me feel modern and versatile. There is a lightness and airy quality to this fragrance. I wouldn't say that it's just a fun fragrance. I don't think that this is fun. I don't think that this is very serious. I think that this is just right. It is a very modern interpretation of coffee and oud. Beautifully done. This is definitely a fragrance that I think that you can use during the day. You can use it during the night. I think this is definitely a fall, winter, spring fragrance. I think all of the fragrances in this collection are primarily, in my opinion, 
for fall, winter, and spring. And depending on how daring you are, you could use it during the summer,、uh, you know, during the evening. But these are definitely oud fragrances. Some of them are more intense than others, and I will be sharing that with you. But I definitely think they are geared more towards the fall, winter, and spring seasons. So the next fragrance that I want to talk about in this collection is the Vanilla Oud 36. Guys, it took them 36 iterations to get to this fragrance. That should tell you everything. So this is another one that Mona herself says that does not fall within the intense category. But I have to tell you, this fragrance, while it's not intense, it's not beast mode in my opinion. It's also not faint. This is another home run for me. This fragrance is absolutely beautiful. So let me tell you a little bit about this vanilla. So, when I first spray it, oh my goodness, I get the most beautiful mix of saffron and pear, like immediately. Like when I sniff it, and if I spray it on my skin, I get that saffron. It's just beautifully balanced with the pear. Then I get this very like shimmery, like very like playful rose in the background to call it something. It is definitely a modern rose. It is not an old. It is not a classic rose.、Uh, it is not a classic rose. It's more of like a modern, playful rose. But don't don't be mistaken. This is not a playful fragrance for me. No, this is just a very very playful rose in the background of that saffron and that pear opening, which makes it so 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 different than anything else in my collection. Then, definitely, I pick up on that vanilla. There's a hint of sweetness that starts to trickle in once you pick up on that initial rose. The vanilla follows immediately with that sweetness, and all along, guys, there's again that impeccable oud. There is nothing skanky about this oud. There's nothing overpowering. This is such a manageable oud fragrance. So, if you're new to oud, if you've been wanting to try oud but you've been afraid to do so because oud can be quite intense, can be overpowering over other notes and other fragrances, and can definitely be the dominant and statement-making note, this is a fragrance for you. This is the perfect. Fragrance, in my opinion, to start your oud journey, and you won't be starting with something that's kind of watered down. You will really experience oud, but you will experience it in the most beautiful of ways. So you have the vanilla, you have the oud, and then there's a creaminess that's brought in, in my opinion, by that cashmere wood at the base. So at the base, I am getting the most beautiful mix of vanilla oud. In a creaminess of that cashmere wood, this is absolutely beautiful, guys. I love this fragrance, and I think I forgot to tell you this about the cafe oud. The cafe oud and the vanilla oud for me both lean feminine. Now, let me just tell you: if you are an oud lover and you're thinking that you're going to pick this up and this is going to be your next intense vanilla oud type of fragrance, this is not it. This is again, guys. I can't say it enough. This is a balanced oud vanilla fragrance, but it is exactly she has delivered on what she designed this to be. This is a vanilla oud fragrance where no note overpowers the other. They're both present and they're playing beautifully with one another. When it comes to this fragrance, guys, I get a solid, I would say, six hours. The first two hours, I get quite a bit of sillage, and I get a moderate projection. But around the four-hour mark, it starts to become more of a scent that is within my bubble space.、Um, and then around hour six, that's when I decide that I really want to respray. 
if that were to be the case and that's because I love to overspray. The same thing with Cafe Oud. So they do have a good performance on me because I think six hours is quite good. After six hours, it's a skin scent. Up to the two hour mark, I do get a very nice sillage and I do get a moderate projection. This fragrance I definitely think is perfect for fall, for winter, and for spring. But I also dare say that you could layer this fragrance for summer evenings when you're going out on a date during the summer as long as you're careful with how you spray because the first two hours are quite prominent. This is definitely a fragrance that makes a presence during those first two hours. But around hour three, it becomes much more manageable and it continues to go down that, you know, down that path. But the first two hours, there's definitely a presence. Anyway, guys, Kiali Vanilla Oud 36, a delight. All right, so the next fragrance that I wanna talk about I'm going to skip the rose oud because I'm going to skip it and leave the rose to the end because that's like the obvious one if you're an oud lover. Um, but I want to talk about the tobacco oud. So this is the tobacco oud 04 fragrance. Oh my goodness, guys. Wow. Let me tell you something. Let me just address the elephant in the room. If you are a fragrance lover and you've seen my most recent video and you've seen and you're always watching videos on YouTube and looking at people and you're looking at reviews on Instagram, I'm sure that you're very familiar with the latest release from Guerlain, which was Tobacco Honey. Let me tell you about this fragrance. So this fragrance, oof, okay. Tobacco for me is present in this fragrance from beginning to end. My entire journey is definitely with that tobacco, but this is not a faint tobacco, which I am loving. This is not overpowering. This is done just right. It's like the right amount of tobacco to balance with all the other notes. Now, what are the other notes that I'm really picking up in this fragrance? I am picking up guys at the very top immediately. I pick up that honey. It is not syrupy like in tobacco honey. It's a little bit more balanced, which I think was done exquisitely. There's geranium and there is definitely clarisage here, which is a note that I have never picked up in a fragrance before, but I can clearly pick it up. Then we go into this journey of like saffron and cloves. Oh my goodness. They're like sprinkled over that initial sniff of this tobacco and this honey. And then at the base, oh my goodness, guys, the base is absolutely exquisite. I'm getting the most beautiful balanced tobacco and oud like sprinkled with drops of honey and then a bit of vanilla. Let me tell you, I am going to say this. If you've been watching me, and I know I've said this so many times today, but I'm going to say this one more. I love Guerlain. I love the entire house of Guerlain. Makeup, fragrances, you name it, right? That There is a level of quality there that I love. When it comes to tobacco, honey, that fragrance from Guerlain, I love it. Absolutely love it. But this fragrance, it's giving it a run for its money because if you were to tell me, hey, you know what, Arahi, I really want to pick up this fragrance, tobacco, honey, but it's so expensive. I'll tell you, hey, don't sweat it. You don't have to worry about it. Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to go pick yourself up that tobacco oud from Kayali. Guys, this is done beautifully. I pick up more tobacco in this fragrance than I do in tobacco honey. But by saying that, am I saying that the tobacco is such a dominant note in this fragrance that it is like just tobacco and it's just going to take over? No, no, no. Again, the running theme for me in this collection is balance. 
they have exquisitely exquisitely managed to balance notes that are not typically easy to balance because let's just start with oud oud is not a note that you typically can balance that's why some oud fragrances tend to be overpowering come across as very animalic uh, you know females tend to think that they're more masculine leaning and i love oud i love a lot a lot i love i love different types of oud i love sometimes quite strong oud i don't mind animalic oud as long as it's done right but this guys i tell you and this fragrance oh my goodness the performance is unbelievable i get six to seven hours if not more with this fragrance and i don't overspray this fragrance and i do get six to seven hours around the five to six hour mark is when it starts to become like a scent bubble but before that i have very good projection and i have very very good sillage when i have worn this fragrance i have definitely received compliments from both females and males I've had people ask me, what are you wearing? And I have to tell them that it is definitely tobacco oud from Kayali. I have someone who is a friend and who's also into fragrances. And she did ask me, was I wearing tobacco honey when I was wearing this fragrance? This fragrance, guys, is done beautifully. It is a fragrance that you can wear during the day and during the night, uh, during the winter, during the fall, and during the spring. This is not a fragrance that I personally would use at all during the summer, but hey, to each their own. I personally think those are definitely the seasons for this fragrance, and you can use it day and night. Just be careful with the amount that you spray because this is definitely a fragrance that has a presence to it. Is it beast mode? I think there is a bit of a beast mode in here going. It's just that I have fragrances that are truly crazy beast mode, right? This is so balanced, guys, that I, that, that, that I just don't think that you could ever call this beast mode because it is a balanced fragrance. It does what it needs to do when it needs to do it, how it needs to do it. It's just beautiful. When I tell you, oh my gosh, so you may want to say for example that this leans a bit masculine because of that tobacco and that oud combination but for me this is perfectly unisex this fragrance is perfectly done it's the perfect balance i will repeat that of tobacco oud sprinkled with a little bit of honey and that vanilla oh my goodness beautiful i'm gonna stop there because i could just keep going on this one fragrance. That is Kayali Tobacco Oud 04. All right, guys. So the last fragrance from the collection before we go into the back horse is Rose Oud, and I believe it's 16. Yep, it is Rose Oud 16. Now, this fragrance. Oh, guys, and I forgot to tell you, all of the bottles have the notes of the fragrance in the back. So this one says lemon, geranium, Bulgarian rose, vanilla Madagascar, cashmere wood, and oud. This to me is gonna be the easiest fragrance to talk about in this entire collection. So as an oud lover, if you're an oud lover, you know that we're always um, picking up fragrances that even if they have other notes dominant, you can definitely tell obviously there's oud, but then there's also a rose. This fragrance to me, I'm just gonna be honest with you, is not groundbreaking. The beauty of this fragrance for me is that it opens with the freshest rose I've smelled in quite a while. This is why I said before that this entire collection to me is a modern take on oud. This fragrance even though it's not groundbreaking, is honestly a very, very beautiful fragrance. It opens with the freshest rose. It's almost like, like it's rose water, you know? It's just, it's just beautifully, beautifully done. And the oud for me and the rose partner and take me on this journey from beginning to end. So 
at the top, like I said before, I do get like that fresh rose, like that fresh rose, like rose water. But then I also pick up a little bit of lemon and a little bit of pear. And I think that the way that they did the pear and of course the note of lemon is what brings that freshness to the rose but this is something very new to me right i i, I have a lot of rose fragrances in my collection guys with and without oud and this is definitely the freshest of the rose fragrances that i have right now then in the middle it's almost like that fresh rose becomes a bit sweet I, I don't know how to explain it any other way. It's like what I pick up is like a sweetened rose, not a syrupy rose, not an over uh, mature rose. You know, when, when rose petals mature, there, there's like a lingering sweetness to, to their scent. No, no, this is like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a sugared, beautifully fresh rose. And then at the base, guys, what I get is very simple. It is that oud, beautifully balanced and done right and a bit more intense than all the other fragrances except the tobacco one. I would say the tobacco oud fragrance is the most intense in this collection, followed by the rose oud. So at the base, I get that vanilla, I get that fresh rose, and I get that beautifully done oud. And guys, it is exquisite. It is a delight. Let me tell you, this fragrance reminds me when I when I used it for an entire day. I kept getting whiffs of it after that six-hour mark. I, you know, I just it was like a scent bubble that would not leave me alone, and it grabbed onto my clothes, and it, it would just not let go. So there is very good performance to this fragrance. But all throughout the day, I had to keep reminding myself that I was testing this rose oud fragrance from Kayali because it kept bringing to my mind one of my favorite rose oud fragrances, which is from the Armani Privé collection, Rose d'Arabie. When I smell this, I'm smelling rose d'Arabie, but in a fresher way. It is just incredible, incredible, incredible. So if you're into rose oud fragrances, you know, there's nothing groundbreaking about this fragrance except the way that it's been blended and the freshness of that rose. This is also a fragrance that gave me six to seven hours. The performance on this one is very, very similar to the uh, tobacco oud fragrance. It is less intense than the tobacco oud, but in no way does that mean that the sillage is less. I still get a very, very good sillage during the first, I would say, four or five hours, and then it becomes a bit moderate. And I also get very, very good projection the first two hours. You have to be really careful with how much you spray this fragrance. I also think that this fragrance is beautiful for layering with other fragrances, not just within the Kiali collection, but also other fragrances within your collection. This is beautifully, beautifully done. I definitely don't think that this is a fragrance that you should plan to use during the summer. I think this is definitely more of a spring, winter, and fall. And I think this is perfectly unisex. I don't even think that this leans feminine or masculine. I think this is perfectly unisex. And if I had to pick a lean, I would say leans feminine. All right. So now let's take a look at the Bacors in more detail. These come in this beautiful, beautiful container, guys. I mean, look, you can see the size of my hand. And then this is quite a hefty type of uh container and then it unscrews and then it has this plastic cover and this shield I guess of freshness little slip and here you have it oh <laughs> these are oud chips they are chips infused with the same fragrance that you get in each bottle. Let me tell you, 
I will link everything in the description box below, you know, if they're still available. I don't know if these were limited edition or if they're part of the permanent collection, but I am going to tell you, this is so worth it. So I want to show you everything in more detail. So let's go to this quick take on how the Bacor works. This is definitely something that I'm so, so glad that I picked up. These bacores are excellent and they bring quite a bit because all of this smoke that you're seeing that's being generated is just with that one chip that I showed you um, in the video. So guys, before I give you my final thoughts, let me rank the fragrances for you like I told you at the beginning of the video from my least favorite to my most favorite. And I'm going to start by saying that all of these fragrances, I absolutely love them all. I think they are quite special and they have come to take a place in my fragrance collection that no other fragrance or fragrance collection has been able to occupy. There is a balance, there is a modern vibe to each and every one of these fragrances and I love them all. But since I have to rank them for you, I will definitely do that. So I think that my least favorite, if I have to pick one, and it's just because I have so many of these fragrances in my collection, would be the Rose Oud fragrance. And as I said before, this Rose Oud fragrance is absolutely beautiful. It's very modern and I absolutely love it. I just had to pick one to say, you know, is at the bottom of the list in number four. That would be the Rose Oud fragrance. Then coming in at number three, even though I am absolutely in love with this fragrance, absolutely in love with it, and I think that it is a needed staple in my collection, even though I have others with these same notes, the way this has been done, I can't stress it enough. It's just beautifully blended and there's a definite unique use for this fragrance for me but it's going to be the vanilla oud coming in at number three can you stop right now and tell me in the comments below which one do you think will be my number two and which one do you think will be my number one let's see what you say then guys coming in at number two and honestly i just feel so weird having to rank these because to me, they are all number ones. They, they really are, guys. They are all winners and they each have a role to play within my fragrance collection. Um, I think this, this, this is a beautiful collection, but I have to pick a number two and that number two would be Cafe Oud. Milky coffee and Oud fragrance. And of course, guys, now it comes without saying that my number one pick is the Tobacco Oud fragrance. What do I think about this collection? I really have enjoyed this collection and I think Mona and her team did a phenomenal job. I, the perfumers involved should be very happy because even though they've created fragrances um, that have profiles that are not unique in the fragrance industry, the way that they put them together, that the fragrances were blended, and the journey that each fragrance delivers is quite unique compared to other fragrances. Um, so I, I really think that this entire collection is beautifully, beautifully done. I think every fragrance is quite unique. I think that if you're an oud lover, you need to get your nose on these fragrances, again, I don't recommend that you blind buy anything. I did blind buy these fragrances again because I am a radical oud lover and I just had a feeling that this collection was going to be very special. 
And to me, special it is indeed. So congratulations to Mona and her team again. But I will say, if you are not an oud lover, you may still want to get your nose on these fragrances, specifically the vanilla oud, the cafe oud, um, because those two fragrances have a journey that is so incredible. And it's not really focused on just oud. It's really about the playful exchange between all the notes involved in each fragrance. So you may want to get your nose on those two if you are not an oud lover at all. Now, if you are an oud lover, get your nose on all of them. But I really think that if you are into fragrances that have a lot of depth and fragrances that make a bold statement, you are going to love that tobacco oud and you are going to love the rose oud. The rose oud is not groundbreaking, but it has a very special twist on your typical rose and oud fragrance. The bakors are unbelievable and the amount that you get in one of these containers and the heftiness of it it's just really really a delectable and enjoyable uh part of part of, of your ritual that i definitely would recommend that you try if you like you know i know that you can't get your nose on these get your nose on the fragrance and whichever fragrance you like try one of the Bacors. I, I think you will like it. I think you will really enjoy if you've never um, experienced burning, you know, a Bacor in your home or incense or anything like that. Just try this. And uh, again, the I will link the burner that I found on Amazon. Anyway, guys, we've reached the end of this video. I hope I was able to give you all of the information that you need in case you're thinking about testing or picking up any of these items, especially now that we're in the holidays. And I will see you in the next video.